Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you'd like to see next, and like and subscribe for cooler cats next time we play. Maybe. Today we're building Sailor Venus from Sailor Moon. True Tulak fans may think, hey, didn't your Sailor Moon videos get taken down by the animation company? And that's true. That's why I'm using footage from the Sailor Moon video game, which looks a lot like Dark Souls 3. I assure you, it's a purely coincidental thing. This is a totally legitimate Sailor Moon video game for the PlayStation Switch. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a chain that you're really gonna love, even if the bad guys don't. Next, we need a moonbeam, which is funny because Venus is one of the two planets that doesn't have any moons. Finally, we'll make sure that we play well with others, jumping in to defend our friends and just making the whole crew better with the power of love. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you're keeping your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. If you want to become a pop idol, you've got to be able to pop. Strength next before you're you're superheroing, you were a volleyball player and a pretty good one. That's athletics. Constitution after that, Sailor Moon wasn't the first guardian to awaken. You fought bad guys all by yourself for a while. Follow that up with dexterity. The sailor uniform isn't heavy armor, so you need to keep it light. Wisdom is a bit low. We just don't need it like everything else, and we'll dump intelligence. You're not as bad at studying as Usagi, but that is a low bar. Venus is a human, and I want to feed, like Martial Adept, letting you learn two maneuvers from the Battle Master list. Bait and Switch lets you change places with a willing creature within five feet of you and add a d6 superiority die to both of your ACs. A maneuvering attack lets you add your superiority die to the damage of an attack, then a friendly creature can move half its movement as an action. Both are great ways to use your chain to get allies in a better spot. Bump your constitution and charisma with your two free points, take performance for your skill of choice, and the athlete background for athletics and acrobatics so you can serve up some sweet volleys and spike the baddies for the kill. That's every volleyball term I remember in one joke. We're going to kick things off as a paladin, letting you grab two skills from the paladin list, like persuasion and insight to understand our friends and become friends with more people. Friendship is pretty great. You can lay on hands to heal a creature from a pool of five times your paladin level. Just think of it as encouragement and divine sense lets you detect celestials, fiends, and undead an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. Most aliens in D&D are aberrations, but Sailor Moon enemies are sort of their own category. I could see them being categorized as fiends or celestials. Stars are celestial bodies. It's not totally out of the question. So level one of paladin doesn't actually seem to be all that Sailor Venus. Why are we here? It's for second level of Paladin to do some Venus stuff. We'll be calling the Love Me Chain a whip, a reach weapon that normally deals 1d4 damage. Pretty pathetic. Paladins can jazz that up with the dueling fighting style to add 2 to the damage of an attack you make with a weapon in one hand. Jazz it up even higher with Divine Smite, letting you add 2d8 radiant damage to an attack by spending one of your spell slots in an extra d8 of damage to fiends or undead. Also another d8 if you jack that spell level up when you get higher level spells later. That's a chain you can really love. Of course, you can also use your spell slots on spells like Divine Favor, which adds a d4 of radiant damage to weapon attacks for a minute depending on your concentration, which can eventually deal more damage than a smite, but it can be risky. If only there were some way to make it so all of our attacks were dealing radiant damage. Third level paladins can choose a sacred oath, and devotion might sound the most lovely, but redemption is what we need to wrap up the baddies later. You get two options for a channel of divinity. Emissary of Peace lets you add five to your persuasion checks for the next five minutes to really turn up the charm. Rebuke the Violent lets you force a wisdom saving throw on a creature that attacks one of your friends. If they fail, they take the same damage they dealt to your fellow sailor. I just think of it as an opportunity attack with the Love Me Chain. In the name of Venus, punish them with the power of love. You also get divine health, making you immune to disease. There's a whole episode where you're the only one who doesn't get sick. That's just the creators saying I'm correct. Fourth level paladins get an ability score improvement. We're going to be a paladin who actually focuses on charisma. It might not do a lot for you right now, but it's going to pay off huge in a second. Fifth level paladins get an extra attack, letting make two attacks instead of one with your action, getting a nice chain of attacks going. Get it? chain? Okay, but seriously though, hold person is the big get from Redemption Paladin. Forcing a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid, failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration. That means melee attacks from you and Jupiter are critical hits. They automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws from Uranus's earth shaking and Mars's fire. It's one of the best ways to help your whole team bully the absolute heck out of some bullies. Sixth level paladins can help their team even more. With Aura of Protection, letting creatures within 10 feet of you add your charisma modifier to their saving throws. It's definitely better with your friends, 
but will also help you on solo missions since you're within 10 feet of yourself at all times. All of your saving throws are positive now. That's fantastic. 7th level Redemption Paladins get Aura of the Guardian, the Sailor Guardian, letting you take damage for another creature within 10 feet of you as a reaction, another way to take the place of one of your team members. You're obviously just going to bounce back to your original position when it's done. That's not just me reflavoring it to make the ability work. I would never do that. 8th level Paladins get another ability score improvement. Capping off your Charisma modifier will add 5 to everyone's saving throws and make your chain super hard for enemies to break. Everyone thinks Paladin is a martial character with some spells, but they can just as easily be a caster with some martial abilities. 9th level Paladins can learn 3rd level spells. Daylight dispels darkness in a 60 foot radius sphere, creating a big bright light as well for an hour. That should help everyone see in the dark without dark vision. A whole party of humans. Whose idea was that? It's almost as though every fantasy and sci-fi setting has human or a human equivalency and the main characters are generally humans to anchor human readers in a fantastical setting. Making a bunch of humans would be the most accurate way to represent that source material. Ha <laughs> ha, wouldn't that be wild? 10th level paladins get Aura of Courage. Making your allies within 10 feet of you immune to fear, it's always a little easier fighting extra dimensional monsters when you're doing it with a body. 11th level paladins get Improved Divine Smite, letting you add a d8 to every single weapon attack you make with a weapon. So, your whip now basically deals a d12 of damage. Basically. I did not say it does deal a d12 of damage, it deals a d8 plus a d4. I know those are different, but it's basically a d12. And the bulk of it is Radiant, which isn't as commonly resisted as Slashing. That's very helpful. 12th level Paladins get another ability score improvement. Start getting your strength up. Your whip might be dealing decent damage now, but it's pretty inaccurate. I guess that's why you have to wrap people up, though. Makes them easier to hit. Quick bounce over to Holy Solely Sorcerer, also known as Divine Soul if you believe the misprint in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. You're favored by the gods of love, letting you add 2d4 to a failed attack roll or saving throw once per short rest. I think attack roll is much more likely. You have a plus 4 to even your worst saving throws. We're here for a crescent beam and we'll eventually get a couple different options. Sacred Flame is a cantrip version, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d8 radiant damage to those that fail, and you could ignore cover so nobody can hide from your light. Speaking of, light creates light without dropping a third level slot, but it's much smaller. Guidance and resistance give an ally a d4 for an ability check or saving throw to help your team even more. You gotta love having love on your side. Guiding Bolt is a bigger crescent beam. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next person attack that target advantage. Everything you do helps the whole squad. I wasn't doing this intentionally, but dang, you're a very helpful gal. Mage armor makes your AC 13 plus your dexterity when you're not wearing armor. You have the strength for plate, just wear plate. But if you want to fight people in a mini skirt, this will make it a little less awful. Multiclassing a sorcerer level into paladin isn't all that stressful. Check page 165 of the player's handbook. That's how many slots you have. Now we're going to go back to paladin because we have the beam. That's all we wanted from sorcerer. 13th level paladins can learn fourth level spells. Banishment forces a charisma saving throw on a creature, sending them to a harmless demi-plane or back to their home plane if they're not originally from here. Fueled concentration, they stay gone unless they're from Earth, then they just come back to Earth, but you're mostly fighting aliens and monsters. 14th level paladins get Cleansing Touch, letting you remove the effect of a spell from a creature for free, no check or anything, an amount of times equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. Obviously, you're dropping it just in time to get the baddies off your buddy's back. 15th level redemption paladins get Protective Spirit, letting you heal 1d6 plus half your paladin level every round you're below half health, letting you stay in the fight longer until the other Sailor Guardians actually awaken their powers. 16th level Paladins get another ability score improvement. Keep pushing your strength up for more accurate chains. That's more important than actually dealing more damage with your modifier, though that's also not bad. 17th level Paladins get 5th level spells. From the redemption list, Hold Monster is like Hold Person, but without the humanoid restriction. So your chain can wrap up a motorcycle woman monster thing. The monsters in Sailor Moon are wild. Look up Sailor Moon villains if you just want to go on a trip. Holy Weapon just pumps up the radiance of your chain even higher, letting you deal an extra 2d8 of radiant damage with each hit, in addition to the d8 of radiant damage you were already dealing from improved divine smite, so every attack is dealing 3d8 radiant damage plus 1d4 slashing. You can dismiss the radiant damage and force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot radius sphere, dealing 4d8 radiant damage to those that fail and blinding them for a minute if they fail, half damage and no blinding if they succeed. Since you really have two moves being the chain and the crescent beam, I'd say the chain is worth investing in. 18th level paladins get improved auras, spreading your aura 30 feet instead of 10, making your positioning a little less important to help the other Sailor Guardians. Our capstone is the 19th level Paladin for one last ability score improvement, letting you cap off your strength modifier so your chain can be off the chain. It will really bring the pain. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are an incredible support. Just being near you makes people better. That's what love does. You're also able to stop creatures from moving, making you hard to get away from. Holding people down also pairs well with Divine Smites, doubling big amounts of radiant damage 
with a critical hit. For weaknesses, you really are only dealing radiant damage, some creatures are completely immune to that. You also have proficiency with heavy armor, but in character, your AC is terrible. 14 AC means you're gonna get smacked all about. Finally, the Capstone of Redemption Paladin is really good. Paladin Capstones are always really good. It's not really in character, but I recommend it. It's better than a few cleric spells from Sorcerer, somehow. But you have the power of love and big radiant damage. Wrap people up, protect your friends, and do it while looking really similar to one of your friends. Just make sure that you eventually find some other people. It would be embarrassing if the Emissary of Love was rolling solo. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.